Oh, I'll let you know that uh, former, is now former Chelsea's goalkeeper Atibua Kotoa has been unveiled uh, at Real Madrid. Uh, Real Madrid wanted him and uh, so he ended a seven-year span at Chelsea. Uh, he said, today I'm realizing a dream. That's what Atibua Kotoa said. And, and, and that's what it is, you know. He's giving seven years to Chelsea. Good enough. But when you're moving to Real Madrid... We're talking about Real Madrid here, yeah, yeah. you know. <laughs> We're talking about Real Madrid. Probably when he was in Atletico, he had one high, you know, <laughs> that he would definitely be the goalkeeper of Madrid someday. And uh, I think it's happening right now. He's, 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 he's in Madrid right now, and I think he's gonna he's gonna be there for quite a while. You yeah. Know? Says I'm realizing a dream, and he went on also uh, to thank Chelsea fans and everyone at the club. I said, I hope you understand that being close to my kids was considerable in my decision. So with this footballer, sometimes a lot of things come into play, particularly family. Yeah, you saw exactly what happened to Dimitri Payet. You know, when he was in England, he had to take a pay yeah. cut back to France, you know, just to be with the family and everything. So I think uh, family also has a, play, a role to play. You know, some of these players can't stay too far from their, their families. And uh, going to Madrid back, you know, where he, has, he was there with Atletico for two seasons on loan from Chelsea. So, so I think uh, it's a dream come true for him, you know. Yeah. yeah. So Chelsea fans don't feel so bad. Uh, Tibua Kotoa says Chelsea will always have a special place in his heart. Let's listen to him. I want to thank them for the past four years that I've been there. Um, I came to a, a big team. Uh, for me as well, it was a, a big uh, goal to win a Premier League. I won it twice, so I'm really proud of, of that. And now there was just an, uh, after four years, I, I, I found that I had a new chance uh, in my career and a chance I had to take. And as well, uh, what was important in my decision as well is that I have two kids here. Uh, and for me, that's important to, to live close to them and to see them grow because the last one half year was not easy. Uh, so that's it. Seven years at Chelsea gone. A new chapter at Real Madrid starts for Tibua Kotoa. Chelsea didn't just read it. Okay, uh, Kotoa is out of the way. We're going to smash the record. And uh, so they broke the record transfer fee for a goalkeeper by signing Kepa Ariza Bagalaga from Atletico Madrid for 71.1 million pounds. Do you know how much that is? A silver 33.4 billion naira. Or a seven-year deal. Where you give a goalkeeper that sort of money, you should retire at your club. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. I think Kepa, I, I've, no, I've not really had time to watch Kepa on most yeah. of his games, but I think uh, there should be a reason why Chelsea will splash such, such amount. You know, that amount is huge. You know, we're talking about, we're, we still to recover from Allison <laughs> transfer from Royce. Yes, we're from, talking uh, about we're talking it. About to, to Liverpool now. <gasps> we're seeing on that record here. And he's young. young. Just 23. So, I think... I think, uh, I think, let's, I think we, I just can't wait for the season to kick off and let's see <laughs> what he has so far, you know. Wow. Such amounts. But, but, but if I, with, with, with such, with such um, amount of money spent on a 23-year-old goalkeeper, do you think you'll be under pressure to impress? Definitely. Huh. Definitely. With such amount, he has to impress. Wow. He has to. Definitely, he has to. 71.1 million pounds. That's what Chelsea brought us. said, look, we mean business. Yes, we've lost him back at all, but we're going to spend money on this guy. You can tell her he's pretty young. <laughs> Kepa has played over 100 career league games, has solid experience at the highest level, having made more than 50 appearances in La Liga. And uh, his quality uh, earned him a call up to the Spain squad for uh, the Summer's World Cup in Russia. He becomes the sixth Spaniard uh, in Chelsea squad. They have uh, Cesar Aspiliqueta, Marcos Alonso, Sex Fabregas, Pedro, and Alvaro. Morata. Kepa is eligible to play uh, a Saturday's Premier League opener against Huddersfield. It's a new chapter also for him and of course for Chelsea because um, when you sign a goalkeeper, goalkeeping is a very, very crucial function in football. For such amounts, you wow. know, you, you, he just has to deliver. He has to. <laughs> so I think, um, but I think for Chelsea to come out with such which amounts I think they must have seen something in him and definitely that's a yet that's something I'm yet to see though. that's what I'm if I look this guy was at Atletico Bilbao yeah I mean who was who was scouting him when did they start watching Kepa that they, they can 
dole out 71 million. Well, I think uh, that's the work of the scouts. They must have done their work and they made the thought that maybe this is the guy is a perfect replacement for Kotua because he's quite young and he's just been three and you can see seven year day. So wow. I think maybe they're just, they're not signing the keeper just for this season. You know, Kotua living at the deadline of the transfer, you know, you, you expect that, okay, fine. How many keepers do we have out there that can just replace Kotua? Maybe some clubs will not want to sell. They felt like, okay, fine, let's just bring in this guy and we're going to keep him here for as much as seven years. Wow. And I think uh, he has a lot to, to prove to us when he the season starts. He, he has, has a lot, lot, to, a lot. Uh, to show. So it's transfer deadline day uh, today. Uh, the window will close by 12 midnight. And so a lot of clubs are doing I so. the window closed by Five? Yeah, but you know, some deals can still yeah, pull yeah. through uh, that have not been, been signed. So, uh, Everton uh, got busy. Uh, so, they, they signed Mina, they signed Bernard and Gomez. So, uh, the English Premier League teams, mm. yeah, Lucas Perez left Arsenal to West Ham for an undisclosed fee. Uh, Jordan Ayew uh, is leaving Swansea to Crystal Palace uh, on loan. So, this movement was seen just tells us that look, when the season starts tomorrow, we're going to be seeing breathtaking football. Definitely. You know, last you, we talked about this um, last season, you know, the transfer, to me, so many people, they just feel like um, the, the, the transfer ends today because when the English transfer window closes, I think there are just few, few transfers that will still go on because we know the main focus is on definitely the English uh, the transfer. So I think uh, for me today, the transfer season ends to me today. Mm. Because I feel we'll just see maybe one or two more signings leaving the Premier League. But I think for today, I think we we'll only see transfers in the other big European yeah. sides, you know. Yeah, the, and those and paperwork, those paperwork yeah, to finalize. And and all of that. So the, the league starts tomorrow. The Manchester starts United tomorrow. taking on Leicester City. Yeah. That should get us talking. That should get us talking. But uh, I think, uh, you know, the Manchester United, they didn't, they didn't get the best of uh, the, the <laughs> preseason. They yeah. didn't get the best. There's so many issues coming up here and there with their transfer policy. This well, you know Jose and his mind games. I see, you can remember last season, I told you before the game season started, <laughs> that Guardiola was coming to the, you know, he was... <laughs> but, he was but, but, but they gave him one year of internship. Yeah. He came to the <laughs> Premier League and then he left the hard way he and then he bounced back. He didn't understand English a bit. Yeah. <laughs> so I think Jose would do it. I think tomorrow again, I don't see Manchester losing the game, but it's still they're going to struggle in that game because Leicester is really, really, they yeah. had a very good preseason and Manchester United still they're still trying to find this fitting because they had so many issues during this um, transfer windows. There are so many players they wanted to bring in, but they didn't come at the end of the, the transfer window. And you know, I just feel maybe after a game a game or two, then they should blend. But tomorrow I think it's gonna be a very tough game. But I don't think Manchester United will lose that game. I must say thank you so much, if I for so. stopping by. Always a delight. And of course, uh, to you wherever you are in the world watching sports tonight, remember to keep talking to us on Twitter channels underscore sports. Facebook channel Life in Sports. That's the show for the team. I'm Austin O'Connor. We'll be back again tomorrow to talk some more sports. But until then, in everything you do, remember to keep talking sports by for now.